something that's not playing. that by our own Stephanie Damalano on her keyboard and doing the singing at one of our Sunday morning talks a few months ago and Myron accompanying her on the drums. Oh, we are so grateful for you, Stephanie. Welcome to everyone. I'm so glad to, that you're here and welcome to my backyard. So let's get started. I just want to remind you before I start my talk uh, about our spiritual cafe, which starts at 1130 every Sunday, a thought provoking discussion about mysticism, spirituality, metaphysics, and today with special emphasis on the nature of today's talk. And that is today's talk, patience now. <laughs> So we'll be talking about that. There's a whole lot to that topic that I'm eager to share with you today. Before I go into that, I just want to remind you that when we give, we give in so many ways. And I appreciate all of you for giving in all the ways that you give. Lending a helping hand, making a phone call, dropping off a care package, care goodie baggy, uh, just holding someone in your thoughts and prayers. Um, giving money and if you'd like to find it in your heart to, to give to Unity of Stockton you can do so at our website www.unityofstockton.org.org yes and you could all and there's a PayPal link there it says donate or you could give to Venmo at Unity of Stockton so or you could mail it and remember when we give in any way that we give we give from our hearts. We give because we want to give, 
and not for any other reason, not to get something back, although we do get something in return. We know that's just the spiritual law of the ebb and the flow, giving and receiving. But we don't give for that reason. We give from the heart. So let's get started. Patience now. Sometimes I say, God, grant me patience. And then I wait and I wait and then I go, hurry up. <laughs> uh, that's uh, an issue that I'm working on. <laughs> so how about you, some of you? I heard this joke. Heard someone say, when someone is impatient and says, come on, I haven't got all day, I always wonder, how can that be? How can you not have all day? <laughs> I know, pun on words, but I just was cracking up over that one, and I had to share that with you. So, moving right along. Just wondering, are any of you ever frustrated? Uh, or are there some saints in the crowd? Uh, I know some of us have more of a problem or a challenge with frustration and impatience than others. It's something that I am really working on. Uh, why? Why am I working on that? Why do I feel it's important to do that? Well, if you're like me, me, I feel yucky when I'm feeling frustrated, when I'm impatient when my computer's not going fast enough and I try to rush a computer and you can't rush computers. You get in trouble every time. Or when I'm in traffic and I'm late and by no one's fault but my own, but I'm not looking at that and I'm late and cars are in front of me. How dare they? <laughs> or, you know, any time when I'm feeling impatient, when I'm in a hurry, hurry up mode and someone's talking slowly. And, and I feel impatience rather than understanding that, that their wheel is big and mine is little, <laughs> like a hamster wheel. And that's all that's going on there. And I just have to remind myself to slow down. So when I'm feeling impatient and frustrated like that, I don't like being that way. I don't like feeling that way. It's not pleasant for me. I don't like myself very well. And I want to be better. And what I found, folks, is that it's fixable. <laughs> we can practice it and we can improve. Besides, why else would I want to work on patience? Don't they say that patience is a virtue? <laughs> yeah. I want to be more virtuous. Most of the time. But when I'm in the middle of my humanness and my challenges... And um, I just, it's a big leap for me to jump from impatience and frustration to wanting to be virtuous in that moment. <laughs> so the thing that I need to do is find a leap that's not so big that I can leap step by step. Talk more about that in a minute. And in traditional Christian angelology, I'd never heard of that. Angelology. Traditional Christian angelology. Evidently, they rank angels uh, in a hierarchy, and there are three tiers. And guess what? Patience is seventh highest in the order of ninefold celestial hierarchy. Wow. Those are all good reasons. Yeah, right? But... <laughs> I find I'm wanting more, more reasons why I should do this thing called patience. Oh boy, there's a ton of good reasons. First main reason is that patience has its foundation in love. It helps our relationships with those we want to love and be loved, That those we want to friend. It helps our loneliness. It helps us be together with other people and to feel good about the way we're being together with them. People who are patient tend to feel more gratitude. I want to feel more gratitude. I want to remind myself to feel it more often than I do. 
I feel it a lot, but I want to feel it more often. M gratitude for myself and the efforts that I'm making and gratitude for everyone else, even those that I'm frustrated with. Gratitude for all the good things about them. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to find those, I know, but I want to feel more gratitude. People who are high in patience have, feel more of a connection with humankind. They feel more of a connection with the universe. I want that. There's a mental calmness about them, a composure, an even temper. And if that's not enough, there's an agreeableness about them, a warmth, a kindness, a cooperation. <sighs> they tend to tolerate the flaws in others. I want to do that. They tend to have more generosity toward others, more compassion toward others, and more mercy when others don't behave in the way we think they ought to. How about those for reasons, folks? Powerful. Just softens my heart. The other thing that's important for us to realize is that patience has another foundation, another important foundation. Patience has its foundation in faith. In Hebrews, 11 chapter 1 it says now faith is an assurance of things hoped for an assurance of things hoped for a conviction of things not seen a conviction of things not seen like electricity we don't see it but we know it's there and when we know in faith, from that place of faith, that better things are to come if we stay in patience in this moment. We can be patient. We can more easily be patient. Patience founded in love, founded in faith. And you know what else is important, folks? It's fixable. We can change our habit, and I'm going to show you how. Okay, so I've talked about the why. I'm going to talk about the how. Why? Why? I've talked about some really grand reasons, but I'm feeling like I'm wanting even more. I'm wanting some practical reasons why patience is important for me to focus on and practice and develop. It's beneficial to our health, all kinds of health, to our mental health, to our emotional health, to our physical health, to our psychological health, to our well-being in general. Beneficial to our health to be patient. I'll talk more about that. It helps us in our relationships, as I've already talked about, but I'm going to talk a little more about that. It helps us reach our goals, actually. I'll talk about that. It's the key, one of the key factors to happiness, to a happy life. It's essential to daily life. Essential to daily life. And guess what? We can develop it. We can reap the benefits. That's the great news for me, and I'm guessing for a lot of you. Okay, we talked about why. I want to talk about how, but before I go into that, I want to talk about things like, what is patience, really? There are types of patience, comes in different stripes, and is it really always passive? Hmm. A thing where we just sit back and wait. Does it always mean wait? Hmm. Okay, so what is patience? It's a state of mind. It's an attitude of mind. It's a state of consciousness that beholds the world from the harmony of the divine Christ spirit that lives in 
has its being in everything, including in here, in us. It's letting go of the personal ego human thinking. Patience is characterized by poise and calmness and quiet, restful trust. Especially in the face of trying conditions. Any of you ever have trying conditions? Admit it. Ah, so such is life, right? Sometimes more than others. Some are minor, some seem like a bolt of lightning. So I would say that patience is a form of wisdom. It demonstrates that we understand and accept the fact that sometimes things must unfold in their own time. Oh, I have to remind myself of that a lot. A few weeks ago I talked about surrender and I mentioned a book called Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. And Siddhartha said numerous times in that book, what can I do? I can wait. I can wait. Which is, turns out, a skill for a free and happy life. <laughs> I wish I could show you this cartoon. It has a skeleton sitting in an office chair in front of a laptop at a desk. So imagine that in your mind. And he says, surely a response will come. And he's sitting there, and now he's a skeleton. He's waited so long. I just have to wait patiently. <laughs> oh. Never cut a tree down in the winter time. Never make a negative decision in the low time. Never make your most important decisions when you are in your worst moods. Wait. Be patient. The storm will pass. The spring will come. Robert H. Schuler said that. So we talk about wait. But is patience really so passive? Is it really virtuous to sit and wait? Mm, not always. Well, we realize that when a seed is planted in the ground, it must be nurtured in order for it to grow to its full capacity. So we have to not just sit and wait. We have to decide when's the right time of year to plant that seed. Where's the best place to plant that seed? When, where? It may need more sunlight. It may need more water or less. Um, it depends on the type of plant, of course. And nature takes care of the most of that, but the farmer is diligent where and how it's planted and doing the caretaking of it, nurturing it, actively bringing the seed to maturity, mindful of all the circumstances that that plant needs in order to grow and harvest and reap the fruits. So patience is not necessarily always about sitting still, expecting things to happen. It's not necessarily the ability to wait, but <laughs> the ability to keep a good attitude while we're waiting sometimes. That's challenging sometimes. Joyce Meyer said that. She speaks about spiritual inspiration. You can find her on the internet. So perhaps how, how we demonstrate our patience is the real virtue. Do we patiently act, wait? Do we act? Is patience not always passive? Patience is not always passive. Patience is sometimes knowing that as we make the appropriate movements, we will realize our dreams in time. And it turns out whether or not it's active or passive depends on the type. So patience 
comes in all stripes, many different stripes. But there are three basic types. Interpersonal, and that is where there's no waiting, but where we face annoying people with equanimity. We're patient toward others. We're, and people who have this kind of patience seem to be, from the research, more satisfied with their lives in general and more hopeful. So that was interpersonal. The second type is waiting out hardships without frustration, without despair. Think about the unemployed person who fills out numerous job applications and waits and waits and waits. Or the cancer patient waiting for the treatment to work and wait and wait and wait. Waiting out hardships without frustration, without despair. This type seems more linked toward hope. Um, and then there's a third type, the daily hassles. <laughs> Traffic, long lines in the store, your computer. The daily hassles, this one seems more linked to good mental health. And the type of patients seems, this type of patients, they seem more satisfied with their life in general and less depressed. So three types, interpersonal, waiting out hardships without frustration and despair, and then dealing with the daily hassles. So, <laughs> patience is when you're supposed to get mad, but you choose to understand. Mm. Good news, it's a skill that you can practice and it benefits mental health, physical health, emotional health, psychological health, all health, physical health. You can do patients training and as a matter of fact, they've done a lot of patients training and they've set it up where people learn to regulate their feelings and what triggered them. Learn to catch it early on before it set in learn to regulate their emotions, learn to empathize with others, learn to meditate. Those are all patient, patients training modules. So it's a skill we can practice. So there's four other reasons that we need to cultivate patience. As virtues go, patience is most often a quiet one. It's often exhibited behind closed doors where we don't see it. It's not a public stage usually. It's like the bedtime story that a grandchild listens to over and over and over and over that the grandparent keeps telling and the grandchild listens to it patient with that grandparent. <laughs> or it's like the dancer or the athlete who waits for their injury to heal. Or so, in public now, the impatient ones are the ones that grab our attention. The honking, the grumbling customers, the slow moving lines. And epic movies often exalt virtues such as courage and compassion. But a movie on patience, that would be a bit of a snoozer, wouldn't you say? And yet, yet patience is essential to our daily life. And it is the key to a happy one. It is a key, an important key. When we're able to wait calmly in the face of frustration and adversity anywhere, well, nearly everywhere, <laughs> there are those opportunities, right? Frustration, adversity, nearly everywhere. So there's lots of opportunity to practice. And if we can practice being able to wait calmly in the face of all that, when it pops up in our, li our lives all the time, we see that patience, in patience, there's a difference between annoyance versus equanimity. There's a, in equanimity, there's a mental calmness, a composure, an even temper 
especially in the face of a difficult situation. That's the real challenge. It's the difference in worry versus tranquility. All religions for eons have praised the virtue of patience and philosophers have done the same thing. And now researchers are, are getting into the game. There's been a lot of research and what they're finding in the research is that good things really do come to those who wait. Wow, that's good news. So, number one reason to cultivate patients, better mental health. And that's easy to believe if you call to mind the stereotypic impatient person, face red, head steaming. <laughs> you know anybody like that? Sure enough. Better mental health, less depression, less negative emotions. And that may be perhaps because we can cope better with upsetting, stressful situations. Also, we can be more mindful when we're patient. We can feel more gratitude, more connection to humankind, more connection to the universe, more of a sense of abundance. I have so much in my life abundance in every area of my life. I'm grateful for what I have now. So I don't have to be impatient to get more stuff later. I'm grateful for what I have now. Okay, number two reason to cultivate patience. It makes us better friends. It makes us better neighbors in relationships. It helps in our relationships with others. It's a form of kindness. It's like those times when a best friend might comfort you through the night after night after night of a headache that won't go away or a grandchild that smiles through that story countless times. It makes us better friends, better neighbors, because there seems to be a more cooperative um, sense to those people, a, a more empathic, more equitable, more forgiving nature. Better friends, better neighbors. And with all three types of patients, Um, there seems to be a higher agreeableness, a personality trait that's characterized by warmth, kindness, and cooperation. These people are less lonely, people who are patient, perhaps because making and keeping friends with all their quirks and slip-ups requires a healthy dose of patience. We're able to tolerate the flaws in others, more generosity, more compassion, more mercy. Number three reason to cultivate, it helps us achieve our goals. <laughs> the road to achievement can be long and those without patience who want to see results immediately, they're not willing to walk it. You know, there's a lot, there was a lot in the research or there was a lot of um, hype on the millennials who were unwilling to pay their dues on entry-level jobs, jumping from position to position rather than growing and learning. And the research shows that it helps students get things done. Uh, it helps them put more effort toward their goals, more progress made toward their goals, more satisfied when those goals are achieved, especially if the goals are difficult, more content with their lives as a whole. So it helps us achieve our goals. And then the fourth reason we need to cultivate is good physical health. We're let, people with patients are less likely to report health problems such as headaches, acne flare-ups, ulcers, diarrhea, <laughs> and pneumonia. This is from research that's been done. Um, in impatience, there is an irritability that's, that's characteristic of type A personalities. And those t type of personalities, according to research, tend to have more complaints and worse sleep. So four reasons to cultivate. Better mental health, better physical health, better relationships helps us achieve our goals. If that's not enough, folks, I don't know what is. I'm convinced. So there are three ways to cultivate. Three, 
there's probably a lot more, but I'm going to name three major ones. We reframe the situation. We take on conscious thoughts and beliefs, not just whatever comes, but consciously make an intention to look at what we're thinking and believing about a situation and reframe it. Example, someone's late. We might fume about that lack of respect, or we can see these extra minutes as an opportunity to get some reading done or whatever. Uh, my friend Tim Ford the other day went to the the DMV. He's, he's more than my friend. But Tim Ford, you know who he is. Went to the DMV window at the AAA insurance office. And, of course, there was a long line before they even opened outside the building. What did he do? He took a chair and sat in the chair. And everyone was saying, oh, wish I'd done that. So taking reframing the situation into opportunity. Number two way to cultivate Practice mindfulness. Be less impulsive and more willing to wait for a reward. Step back and take a deep breath and be mindful in the now moment of what, how you're reacting and how you want to react or respond with dignity. And number three way to cultivate is to practice gratitude. In the study, they found that those who were more grateful on an ongoing basis as a habit were better at delaying gratification, thankful more for what they have today, not desperate for more stuff or better circumstances immediately. So ways to cultivate, reframe the situation, practice mindfulness, and practice gratitude. The first requisite in the development of patience is it comes from spiritual understanding we've got to add that part the larger vision of life not having our nose stuck in this humanness but stepping out of it to a higher way of seeing things from a perspective of the divine where we have more freedom in the way we see what's going on less friction less fretting than those who are centered in personality and ego and their human perspective. We may take the gift of patience and make use of it. We may receive it by faith. Then work it out in every department of our being by daily practice of spiritual principles, of spiritual truth. Patience gives us self-control. We have dominion over ourselves and the way we are, the way we be. We unfold the capacity to direct our behavior in Christ-like ways, a result of spirituality. Sometimes we say pray for patience, and that doesn't always work out in the way we hope. <laughs> in fact, it also often puts you in moments when patience is tested. Am I right? The moment you ask for help, you ask God or a higher being or divine for help to be patient, you get struck, stuck in traffic and show up late to work. The answer to prayer is that gives us more opportunities that will facilitate growth in this area. Am I right? You ever notice that? Patience is the calm acceptance that things can happen in a different order than the one you have in your mind <laughs> yeah and this patience can be tested multiple times in a single day know what I mean <laughs> it can catch us even in our best mood it means though being slow to anger having wisdom to not be hasty when tested and our blood begins to boil and we want to rush into a situation. It's wise to take a momentary breather to gain perspective of the moment and act in an understanding way. Patience is the ability to count down 
before you blast off. <sighs> I'm telling you, it will prove beneficial in your relationships. When you choose to be patient and understanding with another, when you choose peace and gentleness to handle the moment with grace, you choose dignity, it helps in your relationships. Proverbs says that with patience, a ruler can be persuaded. And if patience can do that, who knows what power it has to foster other good things in your life. Focus on patience as you go through day after day. As you go through today, starting with today, catch yourself in moments that you are tested and embrace how you could grow in that moment. And as you begin to live it out, watch how your relationships are transformed. Patience is similar to a magnet. It attracts like action, like action. When I act with patience, it sets the stage for others to act the same. I need to step in the moment back and breathe before responding. Act calmly, speak from understanding. It's fixable, folks, it's fixable. And its foundation is in love and faith. And remember that our higher power guides us in every moment. It's right here, as close as your next breath. Foundation in love and faith. And our higher power is always right here guiding us.
Right.